Hey, it's Mitch Native Survival. Today we're going to talk about axe maintenance with the Axis Back Project. Stay tuned. Alright, so here's my collection of axes. Uh, this was the first Grandpa's Brux that I got. I have three of them here. Uh, this is a small forest axe and it has a heartwood handle. It's a great axe. It's about 19 inches. This was my main axe for for a long time. Uh, this small uh, forest axe is actually my wife's, and it's made uh, out of sapwood for the hickory. Really like uh, Grandpa's axes. They're just you know really really top quality. Get to this one in a sec. All right, so yeah, this one's pretty interesting. Um, the handle that I started out with looked, I mean, it was like identical to my uh, my small forest axe. It was identical. The only difference is that it was um, an inch longer, so it was 20 inches, not 19. And the handle didn't have this strong curve right here. It had this exact same shape um, in every way except it just continued straight. So it just didn't have that extra section right here. So it did look just like this. And it didn't have a hole. So it was straight. I don't have a handle anymore. I'm not sure where it is. Now I'm kind of bumming that I don't have it right now to show you guys, but it looked just like that one. Yeah, this axe, I just, you know, knocked out a, a handle real quick with my knife. Uh, this is uh, sugar maple. And, um, this is actually the third handle I made for this axe. <clears throat> I made handles that looked very similar to the Brux axe. And I found them always, always splitting right here, eventually. Um, it didn't help that I was using green wood. You know, you never use green wood to make handles, but I was just busting them out. Because the handle, uh, when I bought the axe, the handle was broken. So I wanted to use it, you know, like that day. So I just literally just started busting out handles like a madman. So, um, you know, this is a quickie handle as well. It's not centered very well, and um, it was green, so it kind of like twisted on me and all that stuff, so it's not perfect at all. Um, so eventually I'll, I'll make a really nice one. Anyways, so yeah, this, this, uh, this head is pretty crazy. It's really, really old. <clears throat> I don't know who makes it. In fact, the guy uh, who kind of started this whole... Uh, you know, um, the Axis Back Project, uh, Scogniv, he knows a lot about axes, so uh, I'm very interested in what he thinks uh, this axe could possibly be, what model, because, um, you know, it does have a pole, so I know that can help date it, you know. It's pretty aggressive, too. I mean, it's pretty monstrous. It weighs like three pounds. To do this thing absolutely <laughs> destroys trees. Um, Great axe, great axe. Obviously it's handmade, you can easily tell that it's handmade. It's made by Smith. It's a really, really old axe. Again, I just wish I knew who made it, but there's no markings at all of a maker. None. The thing is just ancient. And I thought it was really cool when I saw it, because I could tell obviously it was handmade. <clears throat> and you know, in the Northeast we do have a, a ton of, um, a ton of uh, antique dealers just in, in little, you know, villages and little towns and stuff. And they, they always seem to have, you know, you know, um, old, uh, old carbon steel tools. I mean, boxes of them, you know, old, like, you know, ship wooden boxes just filled to the brim with old axe heads. And some of them still have the handles on them. So, um, you know, it's really, uh, it's really prevalent out here. You can find a lot of old axes, but it's hard to, to find out who made them or where they came from. I, I haven't really done too much research on this. So I really can uh, even venture a guess, but I know it does have a pole, so that helps. <clears throat> All right, so now let's get to this one. All right, so this axe is a little different because it's not on the main line for Grandpa's Brox. This is the Wilderness Axe by Brox. 
and it's 24 inches. Make sure I get that in frame for you. It's 24 inches. And uh, it's actually a signature, a signature axe. It was designed by Ray Mears. And he wanted an axe that, you know, was closer to the small forest axe instead of the Scandinavian, which is the next size up. But he wanted to be, you know, closer to the small forest, but um, be kind of in between the two. <clears throat> so a beefier head than the small forest axe, uh, but not quite the same as the Scandinavian. So he kind of made an in-between axe. <clears throat> and um, it's a phenomenal axe. I probably got it about three weeks, a month ago, something like that. And uh, I, I've just absolutely tooled through a bunch of trees with this thing. <clears throat> Sleeping out in, you know, in the 30s. And I had to, you know, process big firewood, you know, like like that. Cutting through it, no issue at all. So I put some uh, cord, I wrapped some cord around the, the handle up here. Because, you know, when it's going into my angles on some of the big logs, um, I skimmed a few times the uh, the wood. Uh, on the angle so you know like you make like the 45s the wedge and um, I really didn't like that so I, want, I wanted to protect it so I just put some paracord around it real tight I just wrapped it and tied it no big deal give it a little cushion okay so um, here's the thing about, about this axe though uh, this axe is actually um, handmade now I know the other Brux axes um, are handmade, but they're not, you know, hammer and anvil handmade. Not not the old way. Um, they're hydraulic, like hydraulic pressed. So the forging is different. This is actually made the old way. And the person who um, got the honors to do that is LP. Now uh, I believe his name is Leonard Peterson. Now I don't claim to know the history of Brux or their employees or anything like that. But, you know, when I when I go through my axe book that comes with the axe, and they're all the same, you know. I have three of these books, they're all the same. Um, it seems that every time they show, like, somebody working and they show axes, it's Leonard Peterson. So, I mean, I don't know if he's, like, you know, the master craftsman there or the guy that's been there the longest, what the deal is, but that's the guy that made my axe, which is pretty cool. And you know when you flip through the book and you see examples of this is our hunter's axe, this is our carpenter's axe, you know, and you look at the person who actually made the axe for that photo, both of them, pretty consistently it's always him. So again, I don't know, you know, the deal with him. These are all his as well, LP. But apparently he's uh, he's pretty prevalent over there. And I gotta say, he made a hell of an axe. I mean, this thing is just. A monster. So uh, this is my new axe, and I'm really digging it. And so far, it's done everything I need it to. I'm not split with it. <clears throat> I've cut down into very small kindling, and I've taken down huge logs. So, so this is my collection of axes. Okay, so two small forest axes, one with a heartwood handle, one with a sapwood handle. This is my wife's. Uh, this is my wilderness axe, <clears throat> which has both: has heartwood and a little heartwood on the tip. Which is pretty cool. Sapling for the rest. And this is uh, a really old uh, axe head. And I really have no information on it other than the fact that it does have a pole. <clears throat> and it was handmade the old way. And the handle I just busted out is just, uh, I made it robust so it wouldn't, it wouldn't break. It's like a big paddle almost. And it's uh, made out of uh, uh, sugar maple. Because sugar maple is really strong. Has a very strong PSI before it breaks. <clears throat> Okay, so there's my axis. Alright, so to keep my gear maintained and oiled up, rust free, I use food grade oil. I just keep this little container in my ruck. It's usually um, flax oil or linseed oil, um, canola oil or olive oil, something food grade. That way it's multi purpose, and also if I'm, you know, cleaning game and I don't have a petroleum product getting into my food, you know. And I just keep a rag with it, 100% cotton, an old guitar rag so goes a long way alright so with winter approaching us the air is a lot drier than it was so I always like to make sure that my kit is well oiled up to 
combat the dryness that comes in. You know, the northeast gets really dry when winter starts hitting. So I want to make sure that I don't get any surface cracks, which can turn into problems later on, on my handles and my tools, especially my axes. You know, using them out in the cold, and you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of stress, you know, a lot of, a lot of shocks when they're hitting, hitting, uh, you know, the firewood. So, I always do my handles, <clears throat> and obviously, do the axe heads as well. I rather enjoy this. It's nice, you know, spend a lot of time with your tools and you're not just beating the crap out of them, but taking care of them, you know? They take care of you. The least you can do is do the same. That's pretty much all there is to it. <clears throat> now, actually, I uh, already did this leather maybe like two weeks ago. And it's, it's plenty supple, it's not drying out at all. So, it doesn't need to be oiled. Alright, so after I've oiled up my axe, one thing I like to do is just to create friction. You heat up the oil. It gets really hot. Helps to helps to penetrate the wood and just um, just kind of polish it on there. You know, I just use my hand to do it. It takes a second, and you can actually see you lose a nice shine on the wood after. All right, let's be mentioning a survival. This is my collection of axes and the maintenance regimen that I put them through once winter starts rolling around. Well, appreciate your views, your comments, and your support. See you in the next one. Take care.